Surviving Mars Green Planet is the second expansion to Paradox Interactive's Mars Survival Simulator and Manager, which takes a firm aim at the idea of terraforming Mars to make it habitable to humans without the need for giant domes or protective clothing. Before we dive into my overview of the expansion, I'd like to thank Paradox Interactive for sponsoring this video and providing early access to Surviving Mars Green Planet. Click the link in the video description to check it out for yourself and stay tuned for a chance to win your own copy of the expansion. I think what excites me most about Surviving Mars Green Planet is quite simply the idea of terraforming Mars. There's a lot of people who look at surviving Mars and see it as Elon Musk's long-term plan for the red planet, or how SpaceX would be in an ideal world, and yeah, I'm kind of one of those people. There's something so sci-fi about surviving Mars, yet simultaneously kind of relatable to us as people, I think, especially with the growing interest we all have in going to Mars and colonizing Mars. Of course, the game is called Surviving Mars, so of course there are a host of new challenges that come your way before you can successfully open your domes and take off your space suits to walk on Martian soil. One of those challenges right off the bat is temperature. During winter on Mars, in the real universe, you can see temperatures as low as minus 125 degrees Celsius, with it reaching maybe 20 degrees Celsius during summer, although at nighttime, even during summer, it can still drop back down to minus 100. Now, you're not going to need to worry about those specific numbers in green planets, but you are going to have to use some of the new terraforming structures to heat and otherwise improve the atmosphere on the red planet. The core heat convector is one of those new structures that will pump water into an underground network of pipes, essentially transporting heat from the planet's core in order to increase the temperature in a given area. Should you want to increase the global temperatures, you're going to want to get yourself a GHG factory, that being a greenhouse gas factory, which will burn fuel and locally sourced carbon to release these gases and effectively increase global temperatures. Similarly, the carbonate processor can convert waste rock into CO2, which when pumped into the atmosphere also improves it. And after you've improved your atmosphere, you're probably going to want to keep it. So something like the magnetic field generator will improve the magnetic field of the planet in order to slow the loss of atmosphere. These four structures aren't the only ones available to you in Green Planet, but they are four that will make a, a huge difference to Mars as you try to take it from red to green. There comes a stage in Green Planet that I think is so exciting. I think it's one of the most exciting stages in the expansion, and that is the stage at which you will be presented with an option. You can take down the glass, you can open your domes, and you can let your people take off their spacesuits and breathe Martian air. I'm, I love this moment. There's something just so satisfying about taking this, this desert, turning it into an oasis, and opening up your domes for everyone to breathe this new air. Now, moving away from specific buildings and systems and moments, I just really enjoy this as an idea for a game or an expansion. Surviving Mars is one of those management games that, quite frankly, I am terrible at. I've spent so much time with the game trying to get good, and sometimes I think I'm making progress, where other times I just end up killing everyone due to a lack of oxygen, or food, or water, or more often than not, all of the above. And for some people, the end game in Surviving Mars is <clears throat> inevitable. And for others like me, it's a bit more of a struggle to get there. But with Green Planet, there's even more of a draw to it than before. 
I've always been someone that likes to spend times uh, spend time making things look nice even in this kind of game I usually make a point of trying to keep things like my solar panels and my wind turbines all in one sort of field of sorts I like to keep things like my moxies and my moisture evaporators in their own area essentially creating sectors this is the solar panel sector this is the wind turbine sector the moxies and the moisture evaporators and then have each sector produce whatever it produces power water whatever air etc etc designing for looks and for the aesthetic isn't essential in surviving mars but i really enjoy it and now i can design with the idea of having grass and trees and bushes at some point I can end up with open farms and open domes and open fields. I can take Mars, this barren, deserted ball of red sand, red stone, red dust, and turn it into an oasis of its own and a perfect second home for my colonists. I'm not necessarily confident in my abilities in surviving Mars just yet, but I do want to spend some time learning to get good so do stay tuned to my Twitter because I will be streaming Surviving Mars Green Planet in the coming days and weeks and probably months so that one day we can boot up a YouTube Let's Play and not be utterly terrible. Now once again, I'd also like to thank Paradox Interactive for sponsoring this video and providing early access to Green Planet. And since I was given the opportunity to check out this expansion early and for free, I would like to give back to all of you. So if you'd like to win your own copy of Surviving Mars Green Planet, there are two things that you have to do. Number one is, of course, like this video. And then number two is share it on Twitter. You don't have to tweet at me, but you must share the video. So the YouTube link to this video with the hashtag nerds on Mars. That is hashtag nerds on Mars with a link to this video, maybe at Surviving Mars or I don't know, your friends or anything like that. Just as long as that hashtag is in there, I can look it up, I can find a winner. On Sunday, the 19th of May, 2019, I will pick said winner and I will contact them via Twitter with more information. If it's past the 19th of May, 2019, then the contest is closed. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. It's been my absolute pleasure to jump back in to Surviving Mars. Once again, thank you to Paradox for making this possible. And have a fantastic day. Bye bye <laughs>